Welcome to the channel, Michael Brandt with Chattanooga Fish Pro. Today, a long time coming, we're getting ready to install our Minn Kota Ultera troll ski system on our 2021 Sea Dew Fish Pro. So, we have our forklift just lifting the front of it up because we know we're going to have to get up underneath it there for our bottom plate mount. We've got our snap on toolbox that we want on Monster Garage and all of our parts that are clearly labeled from troll ski. They've done a really great job being particular and organized and uh, going to make this experience hopefully uh, a no-brainer. So stay tuned. Step one, open bag labeled A cleat. Here we got this here. Or screw the springs in the bag onto the U-bolts and place them through the holes of the side of the cleats. So we haven't opened the cleats yet, but we do have here um, the springs. So it's showing us to take the nuts off. I assume we're gonna put one on each. Screw that on there. So we'll see what happens in the next example or direction. So go from there. Uh, each side of the cleat has punched RL corresponding to the side of the PWC it mounts to. Great packaging. They didn't want nothing to get away on this one. So there's one side cleat. We're going to open this other side cleat to see if there's a left or a right side. So I think that the angle of the TIG welded on base would be different. So we got to figure out which side's right and which side's left. Okay, so we've determined uh, that this one has an up and a right side. So if we bring it over here to the ski, it's going to fit right in that pocket, just perfect. So uh, that way we have the right angle here for the tube that's going to mount on the right angle here for the tube that's going to mount on it later. Pretty impressed. I've never screwed a uh, spring to any kind of hardware, but this is really going to give us a good way to hold on to it and put it in there. Just lay it in there over the top, spin it. Those can hang there like that. Make sure that you have up and to the right, and then we can simply thread it through these. Gives us something to hold on to. And you can wiggle them around. You can see it popped out there and there. And we're just gonna get two nuts started on here. And then we'll be able to screw the other ones off, one at a time, probably. If I hold this real carefully and screw the spring off, I have enough thread sticking out there to get, hopefully, come on. Oh yeah, look at that, to get that one started. I'm gonna hold that there, take this spring here off, thread it off, and then grab my nut and get it started here as well. So, pretty nice secure area of the jet ski, get it centered in there. These are locking nuts, so I can only get them down so far, then I can tighten those down. A lot of thought and effort has gone into this. We have our holes here on the back side. I think that that was actually two pieces that they weld together and clean. So that once those nuts are on there, there's a dimple and an area for those to be hanging out so we still sit flush here. So, uh, pretty rad. Snug these up evenly. These are 7 16 nuts. I can already tell and feel it getting really firm. It's gonna be a really strong mounting point here. I want to make sure that I have enough equal threaded area on each nut here. I don't want to do too much, but I want to go enough to where I know it's not going to get loose. Just kind of feel the tightness here. That's more than enough. Alright, so we're ready to put this part on. Simply goes over our existing nuts. The hardware is provided in the kit. We moved up to half inch hardware, so you need a half inch wrench for this part. Okay, we got those started and tightened down. Make sure on your hardware that you put the lock washer under the bolt head and then the flat washer. That's nice and secure. Boy, that's strong. There's absolutely zero movement there. Set all this hardware right there for now. You can see this was my previous anchoring system. It was simply a carabiner that slid through there. I'd pull my rope through here, and then we had a lock right there, but I'd have to run the, the rope over to here and stack my anchor right in this area, which took up space for my feet. And it wasn't very safe in moving water. You'd throw it out, it'd get stuck, it'd jerk the ski, it'd fill the whole side gunnel well up with water. And then, you know, trying to, if you got a big fish and you need to unanchor and chase that fish down, you know, I had to cut two or three different anchor lines just to go get the fish. I lost the anchor, so Trollski, a much better solution. 
repeat the process on this side. Drape these over the top like little candy canes. That piece goes on through the hole, through the hole. Grab a hold of them, cinch them up. Oh, you can see that I've already made a mistake. It's got to go on the top there so that ankle angle is proper and fits in there. There we go. Those are both started. Now I've got my hardware to put on there. Two of these nuts. We'll get all four of these nuts actually. This is so smart. I can only imagine trying to figure out how to hold that while you're getting those nuts started. We simply repeated this side, same uh, process as the last side. Okay, we got step one just about done. I was pretty impressed that they included the right size Allen wrench that you need. This is the bolt that's actually going to go through the frame, the, the arms of the frame. Uh, it looks like it's already got Loctite or anti-seize on the tips of them. So a lot of thinking ahead. That's pretty nice. One thing I did forget to do, which I may regret later, is that I uh, failed to put the blue Loctite on the nut caps for the U-bolt. So we're going to roll with it for now and see what happens. I can always pull it, up, pull it back apart later. But I feel like there's enough tension on that U-bolt between the the cleat being plastic and the back pressure of that cleat to where they won't come off so we'll roll with that work on the nose piece attachment and you can see that my nose piece was directly underneath the rubber bushing for my crank system so what I've done is I grabbed the rails here with a ratchet strap and I'm lucky enough to have a forklift but you could use anything to lift up your ski or move your ski back so that you have access to the hardware underneath these points right here. Oh, it looks like I had one loose about to fall out. That's interesting. I never noticed that before. So here's one of those screws. Looks like it's a Torx uh, screw. I'll find out what number Torx bit that is so that you'll know. And we'll get ready to put our nose piece on. Okay, so the directions tell you to open the bag labeled B nose attachment. So inside that B nose attachment bag, we're going to have new stainless hardware. So this is the stainless, or this is the piece of hardware that came out, uh, the CD OEM. It looks like ours is a little longer. We also have a number two Phillips. Uh, just so you know, this is a T30 Torx bit that um, you're gonna have to get that out of the nose of the jet ski from the factory. I always try to find the right tool first, but you know, not everybody's going to have a set of Torx bits, so if you get the right size flat, <clears throat> flathead screwdriver, it'll simply go in between those Torx head gripping bits, and you can get them out with a flathead screwdriver. So we'll use the right tool to get the other screw out, and then we'll use a number two Phillips to install these new ones. And the other thing that we have to do is actually unpackage the plate. So we're going to get this plate unwrapped. Um, just so that you know, Trollski has the availability or options of custom powder coating whatever color you'd like. Uh, we went with this Seabreeze Blue for our jet ski. It matches the gunnel, the gunnel piece here, and um, this is and the very front nose piece. I thought that would uh, really look sharp and give my ski some extra flair in another way, just to customize your system. He's always right here to loan a hand. Where's your ball? Help me with the ball. So he always rides on the jet ski with us, goes fishing with me and Connie Cool Beans, and is just a great friend. So here's our nose piece attachment. Um, looks like it's th spaced here to go up underneath the ski. Uh, the directions show that the tab goes to the top. I'm sure we'll be hooking something else to that afterwards. Simply have two of the threaded screws that'll go underneath there after we get our original hardware out and then I'll let you know about the next step. We have a spacer here. I told you that these are a little longer probably to make up for that spacer. They'll simply go in the bottom. Uh, show, the directions show that this tab goes to the upright position. 
So we'll go get the other factory hardware out and get ready to mount this up underneath the nose. Super simple. One was already loose, so this other one just coming right on out of there. There it is. Bam. All right. Nose piece ready to go back in. Find the hole there. Get it started, finger, with my fingers. And then find the other one over here. Get it started with my fingers. Easy enough. Number two Phillips. Perfectly spaced with those spacers behind there. You're going into plastic, so I wouldn't really, you know, put it so far down that you're going to strip those holes. So I have a problem. Um, that bolt that was loose on the, the OEM hardware there on the nose plate, the hole is stripped. So probably came that way from the factory, unfortunately. So uh, I have two different options. I can either try going with a longer screw which is longer than the one that was provided hopefully to catch the bottom end of that hole which didn't work or I'm going to have to go with a larger diameter screw which I found just a, a miscellaneous lag bolt in my stash and I believe that's going to be uh, greater than the holes that are stripped out as far as an outside dimension so we're going to run that one up inside there and hopefully that does the trick it's got a half inch head on it I hate to do things like this, but, you know, sometimes you have to improvise, so we're going to try this. Unfortunately, these kinds of things happen at the factory, you know, it was like 4 o'clock on a Friday when somebody was trying to get out of there, who knows, but it is what it is, so we're going to use a piece of hardware that was not offered in the kit to hopefully try to solve this solution or solve this problem. So. We're going to run it up in there and hopefully it will snug it perfect. If I can keep from dropping my wrench, because you can see right there, that should sit flush in there. One of the other things I'm going to have to do is adjust the crank on my trailer because it hits the nose plate. Oh, there we go. Look, it's sucking it up. That larger size diameter thread, I believe, is the ticket. Let's see how much torque I can get on it. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. So, not perfect, but a good solution. Bam. There we go. We're ready to move on in our directions. Uh, Trolski nose attachment using the provided lag screws and existing holes in the craft. We just did that. We just solved the problem since we had a stripped hole in that plastic by using a larger outside diameter lag bolt. Um, and it went up in there nice and snug. So. The next step is frame connection to side cleats and nose attachment. Inside the nose attachment plate also you'll find this small bracket that will attach from the nose attachment to somewhere up on the frame. I'm not sure yet, but the next step is to take and use the hardware that was provided in the first pouch. I put them here just so I wouldn't lose them. We're going to put our frame on and uh, bolt these through there. Okay, since we have a really tight clearance right here, we're going to have to do some adjusting on our tower that holds the crank and the stopper. For the meantime, I let go of it with the forklift, took the straps off, and have folded it up there with a 2x4 so that I have the room to go ahead and put the frame over the nose and onto the side where it belongs. Alright, so we got our frame coming in hot and heavy. And then we're going to put our bolts through there. separated you see there you go started okay so i believe mine started yeah I'm run it in a little bit i don't i'm not going to get real tight with it yet okay we'll check the directions for the next step since i've never really been good at following directions in my entire life I see something I'd like to try to improve on before I tighten these bolts to the frame. You can see right here that that bracket sits right on top of the fiberglass and I'd like to put a barrier between there so if it ever comes loose it doesn't beat it up and chip it or dent it so I just had some weather stripping here in one of my toolboxes. I'll cut a couple small strips of that and glue it to the bottom side of that bracket so I at least have uh, a small dampening system between those two parts. 
just gonna cut these square on the end there. Put that there and hold it up there and kind of get an idea of how long it needs to be. Something like this would be plenty. Might even get by with just putting one piece in there instead of two if I position it directly under the center of that bracket. Something like this. So that's the high point. That worked out perfect. You can see right here, I now have a barrier between those two surfaces. This connecting bracket was included in the kit for the nose mount area. So it looks like you have one bolt that goes through the top there. There it is. This one's slotted so that you have room to slide up and down to fit there too. So we'll put them both on the same side, probably that side, run our hardware through there. This requires 7 16 hardware, 7 16 wrench, and this really did a great job at stiffening it, making that one unit kind of sandwiches it between there. Uh, super slick design. I'm excited to get ready to put the trolling motor on there next, and um, we'll go for the next steps. Some of you may have seen some of the videos that I post to Chattanooga Fish Pro YouTube and Instagram pages, and a lot of that's been made impossible by this ST3 camera mount hill fishing unfortunately we're gonna to have to remove that because we will now have two eye bolts that go in its place to strap the trolling motor down while it's not being used when it's in the stowed position so we'll have to come up with a creative way to um, put this back together so that we can still use this camera mount because we really like it a lot all right we got to a stopping point for the evening we went ahead and bolted the trolling motor to the frame You'll have to actually take a small screwdriver and pop this C-clip off here, this C-clip off here, and pull this out in order to gain access to the bolt underneath of there. So that's not a big deal. Uh, I did learn online that the Minn Kota uh, GPS puck here has a little arrow on top of it. You can see that's need to be facing toward the front of the bow, the front of the watercraft. So we have some wiring questions. We're going to get together with Trollski. Um, this cover here is removable, so I went ahead and ran the trolling motor skis right through this cover. I simply drilled the hole right there. That's gonna be a nice um, way to hold all those wires out of position. I'll show you what it looks like with the cover. That on. cover's back on, just slides on. It's got two slide on pivot pins down there and slides back this way. Uh, that's a really nice connection. Good place for all the wires to go hang out. Uh, we're going to have to temporarily install power to the trolling system so that we can get it down out of the way to lift up the handlebars, to remove the storage container bin so that we can actually run our long power cable uh, all the way through the ski and back up to the area of the cooler. One of the other things that I did so that I had full access to inside the hole is remove this top plate. It looks like one, two, three, four, five five on each side and then three around the center pole position here. I'll just stack my hardware right there so that we can get back oh to put them back together after we uh, get our, our wiring ran. All right we're on the left side of the ski. Went ahead and set all three Optima batteries in there uh, with all the red positive ports on the left and go ahead and slide the provided uh, battery divider inside there so the batteries can't shift around from side to side. Okay, since I needed more clearance for my nose piece here, I'm gonna take this tower off completely. Uh, we were not able to secure a brand new trolling motor, so we were able to find one that was slightly used, and that's the motor we have. Uh, the problem we have is after mounting this motor to the frame, it's right in the way from being able to lift up the handlebars and take the compartment out to run our wiring. So. We're going to have to wire our batteries in and partially deploy the trolling motor so that we can have the clearance to open the handlebars, get our bin out, and continue wiring. So that's what we're doing now. All right, time to tie these batteries together in a series to make it 36 volt. Independently, they are 12. So by putting these jumpers from positive to negative and positive to negative, that will ultimately give all three of these batteries the ability to become one big 36 volt battery. So I'm going to start right here. 
Here. Positive to negative. Alright. And then we can kind of figure out how we want to lay those. Put, put these started on here. The other reason for doing this now is that we have to energize the trolling motor to lower it so that we can open the compartment and take the bin out and run cleanly run all of our wires and harness to the cooler back here and then put it all back together. Okay, so a new factory Minn Kota trolling motor would have the matching eyelet on the motor side. So this one has been altered since it's a slightly used trolling motor. We're going to have to cut this off and either put eyelets on both sides and bolt them together or to take and put a crimper to make each wire as one. So I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet. We're going to see what size electrical connectors we have. Might do butt connectors and just recrimp those and make that all one piece because we don't plan on taking our trolling motor. And it's a real bear to get on and off, so I think that uh, I'm going to take the chance and just play it like it's going to be more hassle than it's worth to get this trolling motor off if we're out at an overnight event or something. That's going to be your. We now have a wiring game plan. Included in the kit is this pigtail here. Get a nice shot of that. We're going to use one half of it, cut it here and then wire these into the end of the pigtail. That way if I ever do have to do any maintenance on the motor and stuff, at least I can take that apart um, by untaping it. So. Then our wiring harness is gonna run all the way through the ski. Accompanied with that are the control wires for the puck. Gonna run all the way through the ski. Back here, I'm going to drill a hole for this mount right here right just inside the tail end of the hole there. I'm gonna cut this rubber mat back and drill and put that there. Then those wires will come behind the rod holder here to another port. We'll put this other port right here through the cooler. That way we can connect and disconnect the cooler and the batteries if we want to stow it away if we're going to be somewhere for security or if we don't wanna run with the uh, batteries on there for the day. So that's the game plan, stay tuned. So I've enlisted my buddy Clint. He is an electrical guru. Say hi, Clint. Hello. And we're just gonna trim these off like I explained earlier. We have some heat shrinkable um, wire connectors there that will crimp down and reheat shrink. And that's gonna give us a nice connection and a way for us to disconnect it if ever needed in the future. Just slid on a piece of heat shrink. Reach in there, clamp them down. heat gun so we can melt that heat shrinkable butt connector custom wiring by Clint side snoopy look at this you won't even see those butt connectors it's gonna be so nice and brutal damn you done this before yeah i've been on this twice Seems like everything I touch ends up needing some wiring work done. Yeah. Don't tell your buddies. They'll have you over here working on the jet ski. Yeah, I know, right? 
end up working on a lot of having to rewire every trailer I ever use. Oh, yeah. Yeah, make sure the beast, I don't mind, because they're not mine. So nervous drilling a hole in my brand new jet ski. But it's got to be done. So we want just 0.9. A little more. That might be one inch. That is seven eighths. So we can go all the way with this. Okay. That's a sharp bit. All right. That might fit down in there now. One sharp bit. Let's see if we can grab this. Same one, Blank. So we're back here in the left corner um, of the jet ski and we drilled our hole. We pre-drilled for the small, that's about a 1 16th drill bit, pre-drilled all four of those holes. And have pre-drilled these holes for these black screws to mount this rubber grommet and our power cord into the back of the jet ski. Uh, 3 16ths is the size of the drill bit and then we ran a drill uh, a bit down into the holes to kind of pre-thread them. We're using some white waterproof silicone that's going to go right on the back of our plug connector and then we will screw it into its final position. You got a note that we had to take and that we mic'd it with the extra wire sticking off to the side of the back of the plug and it was right at one inches so we did a 7 8 hole and then took a drill bit and just ran it on the side to give ourselves an extra bump there to clean the additional uh, material out for the wires that actually control the puck. So We found something really interesting. We have these two ports here, one on the left side of the ski, one on the right side of the ski. So we assumed if we fished our, we just, this is just quarter inch airline hose that we uh, fished through the vent. But when we first fished it through the left side, it came out on the opposite side of the ski in the back. So somehow it crossed over. So we learned if you do it on this side of the ski, the left side of the ski, fish your line down through there, it'll come all the way back out over onto the right side of the ski, just beyond the bin, which means we didn't have to take the storage bin out at all. Check it out. Ooh, ooh. Uh -huh. Like pulling spaghetti, so. All right. We got it hooked up here, pulling out of the right side airport. There it is right there. Bam. And then we're gonna have our connection for our trolling motor right here by it. And we'll actually be able to pull some slack back out and go back in there. This is a hole where the factory wires run through, so we figured that'd be a, just as good a place as any. And I'm really excited we didn't have to take the storage bin out. That's pretty rad. Good job, Clint. You're a ninja, Clint. Taping our trolling motor lead together. That way we don't have any unsurprised loose connections or any stoppages while we're out on the water. This is important to us because we're gonna slide that down inside that vent hole as far as we can. Uh, note that the, the wire coming off of the GPS puck is a little shorter than the wire provided on the trolling motor. So we'll only pull it long enough to where we don't have a lot of tension on that wiring for the GPS puck and probably tie it back into this. So I've chosen the place where I want my quick connect to go, right here in the side of the cooler, just behind the angled rod holder. We will have to now use our other rod holder back one position instead of the very front position, but I think that's okay. So we're gonna move these batteries back a little bit so that we don't accidentally drill through one of them and um, finish our hole. So we have our one inch hole drilled into the side of the cooler. The cooler's about two inches thick, so we didn't need a one inch hole. We just needed a one a hole large enough for the wires to go through on the inside of the cooler, which is close to about a half inch. We're putting our silicone around the plug. What is that even called? The bulkhead? The bulkhead plug. 
and then we'll use the provided black screws to anchor into the cooler. Not sure if that's a good long-term solution. I'd rather see stainless hardware with nuts and bolts or the nut, nuts on the inside with washers, but we'll give it a whirl, see what happens. That plastic is about eighth inch. I do not believe we'll drill pilot holes for this portion though. We'll just screw them right into the plastic. Okay, so we have a nice little pigtail made from the new port on the ski. It contains the two wires for the puck and the positive and negative lead for the trolling motor. And it comes all the way up here where we installed our secondary plug that comes through and we're down to wiring just those inlets onto the batteries. One of the other things we have to still do is figure out how and where we want to mount our 60 amp breaker, wherever that is, it's around here somewhere. There it is over there on the table. So coming together nicely, looking forward to trying this out for sure. Okay, so we've chosen to put our 60 amp uh, resettable fuse right here on the inside of the cooler. We have drilled and inserted the Astro Tool nut zert. This is the nut zert we're gonna use. We already got one installed, bolted it up there and marked our other hole. So we'll put it on the tool here. It's got one already rigged up. You can see it there on the tool. This is an amazing tool. And we'll see if we can't slide it in that hole. And then we'll crank down on that with the little crescent wrench or quarter inch wrench whatever size it is until it expands on the back side and then we have permanent mounting for our 60 amp breaker got both of our nut certs in we have two stainless quarter 20 allen head bolts or screws that are going to go in there and we can mount that bigger right on in. We have our power wire coming in from where it plugs into the back of the ski and then here, this is our resettable fuse and then the wire will be coming out here going to our first positive post so that way if the amperage spikes past 60 amps in this circuit it'll flip the breaker and uh, save you some headache okay one of the last alterations that I had to made would make for this system to work on my confab trailer is to cut about three and a half inches out of the tower that holds the crank because I was having a clearance issue right there. So I measured three and, a, three and a half inches, cut that out, and since they solid welded it inside there, I just decided it was easier to make another three inch base piece and weld it, weld all that back together. So should be just about right. I can bolt that in, get my tie strap in there and crank it down. Should be okay everywhere. And Believe it or not, we're just about ready to go test this on the lake. So, super excited to see what it does. I have a lot to learn about the key hand controller or the key fob controller. Uh, I've been reading a little bit on uh, the website from Encoda, and we're gonna go give her hell. Stay tuned. So tell me this, when you go get the truck. Yeah, I'm gonna try it right now. Okay. So, when I go get the truck, right, I can take and and then I'm gonna send it out there okay so when I park the boat I drop it off the trailer okay stay on the boat Jiggy does not understand why he's leaving <laughs> and you're not with him say it's like right there right and right push anchor and it's gonna keep it right there so you anchor in it right there yep GPS anchor. GPS anchor, it spot locks it. Yep. And it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna go nowhere. Even though there's a current. Even though there's a current, it's gonna keep it right there. Okay, got it. And then you can go get the truck.
bring the truck here and then remote control that sucker all the way over to the trailer. So park the truck. And walk down to the dock like this and the jet ski could be over there. And then I can drive it back to me. Tiggy, you can use the sea doo by yourself. Tiggy, you're a good driver. You don't even need daddy to see you. And then when I get close, I can turn like this. Pretty cool. How cool is that? Pretty cool. Pretty rad, huh? Mm-hmm. So if we're going someplace and we're going slow and we see a fish, yeah. we spot lock and yeah. we'll be right on top of them. Or if we're at the dam where there's a the crazy current, current yep. we can spot lock it and stay in one spot. And then if we want to take off real quick, we'll just hit that button. Oh, shit. How cool is that? We're ready to fly. Mm-hmm. See you, I'm out of here. Awesome. Thanks for watching Chattanooga Fish Pro.